know how you go to a home deck store and you see something and they're like, I can make that myself for much cheaper. Saw something like that on Friday and today is Sunday and it was for $25 and basically it was a mobile with some seashells hanging from some strands. I was like, oh, okay, I live in the Maritimes. I can literally go get some driftwood and shells and whatever I need to do right here locally without having to spend $25. Mind you the cost of gas these days, I don't know. So today we're going to do a gazebo wind star. Hi, I'm Mikey from The Crochet Crowd and thank you so much for joining our channel today. I'm here to inspire you and create magic with your crochet hook. Are you ready to play? Oh yeah, that sounds good. So as I mentioned, I wanted to do something for our gazebo to make it kind of homely homey or homely <laughs> I have no idea so what I want is that I want to soften up the touch of it and our summers here are pretty short here in Nova Scotia being in Canada eh? so what I wanted to do is kind of look at some things to soften it up so I had these craft hoops from Michaels and I bought them a few years ago because I was all excited to do reefs and guess who didn't do reefs so anyway, so I picked it up. So I had not, I had a 19 inch one and I like whipped it up and I used my Bernat macrame yarn. And so I have spare yarn of this. So I wanted to make it kind of fun. So I was able to make my design and literally the, the, the project only takes about an hour to be honest with you. So today I wanted to film it. It's now Sunday because I was on Friday getting the inspiration from the the deck of the home decor store yesterday I did the design and today I'm filming it but I couldn't find the 19 inch hoop so what I wanted to do is okay if something's broken you can complain about it or you can alter it so what I have done in the pattern is that there's two sizes there's a 19 inch and a 10 inch size and they're both using the same it's Bernat Mac, uh, macrame and it's going to be one ball of uh, burnt orange and the other ball is taupe and it's actually kind of an easy project to be able to do. And by the end of it, you can have something for yourself. And I'll talk about the materials in order to make that happen as we go, because it just spins in the wind. <laughs> Talented, <laughs> not so much. Let's go on to the studio and let's get started, right? Come on. What, what are you waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> So let's get at it today. And we have two designs in one. One is a big size, the 19 inch that you see is what the pattern is written on and then the one in light blue here or the second one in parenthesis just in case you have color blindness is information for the small floral loop. So instead of writing two different patterns I just changed the information. So you see a 19 millimeter size S which is this big thick bad boy here and this is for the large size version the 19 inch and if you're doing the 10 inch version it's 12 millimeter size P is in Peter uh, and both are big thick hooks to play with. So we're going to be using that today. We're also using one ball each of the Bernat macrame and this is burnt orange that you see and I was playing with the change in the size to the smaller uh, one so I've already unraveled this one a little bit. So this one here is called taupe. I think it's kind of more of a natural color. I am leaving it out into my pergola full time and I think in time the sun will fade it but I'm okay with that. So we'll be talking a little bit about that. Also what you're going to need is if you would like it to free spin in the air. So if you just want it to go round and around and, and, and if you let it free spin it won't be fighting the wind. So it won't uh, fatigue the, the hook that is in the pergola or wherever you're going to hang this thing. So what I did is that I attached the, this to the, the, the hanging hook <laughs> and what I've done is that it will just free spin on its own. So I attached the hanging strap to this and so therefore it will spin and spin and spin. So that's something that you can decide for yourself. If you are not confident in your knots you can apply fabric glue and if you want to do that as well and you will want to take care and make sure that all your ends are woven in. So what I'm going to be demonstrating today is the 10 inch version because I don't have a 19 inch loop as I mentioned to you. So I'm going to do the big version later for my pergola once my uh, loop comes or my hoop comes in. I've ordered it online so that'll be a couple weeks from now and and so I'll do that quietly on my own and we're gonna get started. So let's take a closer look at this pattern. Oh yeah, before I get too far, this here is called a badge uh, holder. Okay, so it, that's what this is. It can also be called a swivel spinner but this is a badge holder. So okay, now let's really get into it. 
So when there's size changes you're going to notice in light blue the information is there for you if you're using that. So if there is no uh, color changes that means that the instruction is the same for both. The way that I designed this is that both sides are very close to each other. The difference is pretty much in the second round those loops that are attaching to the outer rim right here those loops change in length. So that's uh, the difference. So it's chain eight then for the big one that you see here and in the 10 inch one it's only chain five. So you see chain eight and then light blue is five. So you'll choose the number that matches to what you're looking for. Also when you're going to do this ring when we do it we want to do it so that when you go to crochet you're going to crochet in this direction. So what I want you to do when you're when we get that far is that crochet like this going across and this will keep the right side facing up. So when you're going to attach it to the right side of your uh, star that you're going to do both of them will be the right side facing up. So that's just a helpful tip for you as well. So what I have here is how it's attached. I have a photographic tutorial on how I did it yesterday when I was designing this. I kind of did it for myself to be honest with you because I was thinking I'm gonna have to write how this is done. <laughs> Easier to take photos and slam some notes there for you. Finally on the last part here is that we have the hanging strap which is attaching to the top and that's where the swivel will go if you wanna do that. This one here does not show the swivel but here in Nova Scotia it can be windy so this thing is going to be kind of fighting the wind a little bit. So I put it back onto a swivel today so that it can just turn without any friction to the upper hook. So with the, uh, the large version that you see here the strands are 45 inches long and then they're folded in half to create the fringe and then on the smaller version it's only 35 inches. So you'll wanna do that. On the, on the big version you will use almost all your yarn. You'll almost play yarn chicken so do not waste any yarn uh, in order to do that. Also what I did that um, wasn't shown in the very beginning is that you'll see that I did not do any ties at the base here. That's a mistake. So the uh, item has almost been up for 24 hours. It, though I unspun the, the white strands they're starting to really fray. So what I went and just did a few minutes ago is that I tied a knot on all the bases of all of the fringe individually so that if it's going to fringe out it'll only fringe to the knot. So instead of fringing and creating a rat's nest that's just something that you can decide for yourself. Okay so without further ado let's start with our wind star as our beginning and let's begin the journey. So let's begin and we're going to start with the magic circle. So just get your tail end here and just put your hand down like this and then just secure two fingers and then using this strand that's leading to the yarn ball just wrap around those two fingers and then back up and cross over. Okay I'll show you again. So in the front of your hand just use two fingers and pick this up and rotate your hand and cross over and use your third finger here to be able to hold that. Now if you're doing the big version you'll need that big S hook a 19 millimeter. If you're doing the small version the 10 inch uh, hoop then you'll just use a 12 millimeter size P as in Peter. So go up underneath and just grab on to this strand right here and pull through. And just move this on there and carefully just move out your hands. So just move out your fingers and keep these two strands together just like you see. And at this point I need you to chain four. So just kinda holding everything stable so that you keep the ring open and you're going to chain four. Once you do the first chain it'll lock that ring so you can just relax a little bit. So we have one, two, three, and four. Now when you go into this ring you need to do 15 double crochets. This is gonna count as, or sorry 15 trebles. So this is gonna count as one treble. So this will be 16. So what I would do if I were you is that just say the next one is number two. So you're gonna treble. So wrap the hook twice and go into the ring and when you go into the ring you make sure the two strands are on top of the hook. And you yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two and two and that's a treble. So what I need you to do is continually add these trebles to this ring. So n never let the ring just going over to one strand. You always have to go over two because you're gonna pull that second strand to pull that tight. So just to recap you just wrap the hook twice, 
and into the center. See the two strands on top, pull through and then yarn over, pull through two, two and two. This is gonna be massive, especially that 19 millimeter S hook, it's gonna be massive. So just uh, keep an eye on this. So there's currently three, you need a total of 16 of these to make it work. So you have the one, two and three, go all the way to 16 and meet me back here in just a moment. So I'm gonna leave you a tip just in case that you think that you're running out of space on this, if you just tug on this a little bit, you can pull it a little bit tighter to get more of this strand just in case you need to. Okay, so don't be afraid to do that. Eventually you'll have to tug it anyway. So if you're running out of space inside or you think that loop is getting too big for you, just adjust it by just kind of pulling on that strand but don't pull it tight all the way. So once you have a total of 16 which includes that chain four, you're ready to go. So I want you then to slip stitch to the top of the first chain four to complete the round. And just pull through and through to finish. Pull a large loop and then just turn it over to the back. Now the center, you can see it's a little lopsided. So what I want you to do is grab that strand and now you can pull on it to tighten up the center ring. Okay, so just kind of work on it. Now what I need you to do and it's easier with a larger hook or sorry with a smaller hook than what you've been playing with is that we need to weave this in back and forth a total of three times. So what you want to do is just go under some fibers. Don't go to the good side of the work. Okay, so I should not see this on the good side which I don't. And I want you to go and pull that through. So I don't wanna go through the same piece there because then it will unravel itself. So you kinda wanna just pull it through and it will drag it along. And you're gonna do that and once you just get it over, just use your fingers. It's just easier because you'll separate those plies and then it gets complicated. So that's one time. And so now you wanna do that again. So again when you go across and pull it, you don't wanna pull out the same spot. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go one further and pull it through. So that was the second time. And then I wanna do it one more time. And so I will wanna do this with any loose ends that I have. So when I say weave in your ends, this is what I mean. And so I don't need to show it to you every time because it's the same process. Okay, so just take your time and then when you think it's good, just kinda reef on it a little bit, get the slack out of it and once you're comfortable, just cut it but don't cut it right to there. Just leave a little bit so that if it does flex on you a little bit, it will be fine. And then you're gonna put this back on and we're going to begin the next round. Now depending which one you're doing, if you're doing the small star, this is the instruction that we'll do and the large star, star is very similar to it, it's just it's a slight change. So right now you're currently sitting in the chain four. So instead of chaining one to start a new round, I just need you to come to the very next one and single crochet. So we're not doing a chain one to start like we normally would. Now. If you're doing the large star, I want you to chain eight and if you're doing this size, the 10 milli or the 10 inch size, the small size, it's only chain five. So I'm gonna do the five because that's the size I'm working on. So one, two, three, four and five. So the large star is chaining of eight. Once that's done, you're going to come to the very next one and you're going to single crochet. Now you're gonna think to yourself, that's not enough. This is gonna stretch. Okay, so you gotta trust in it. So to start another point, you're gonna come and single crochet the very next treble. And then you'll chain the number that is matching the size. So in my case it's five. So one, two, three, four and five and the large star is obviously eight. So you'll single crochet in the next one and continue that process around. So let's start with a new, another side or another point. So single crochet first. One, two, three, four, five. It's chain eight if you're doing the big one. Single crochet in the next. Please do this all the way around. This is the second round. So I'm coming to the last point. So you chain the number that you've been working with. Okay. And then you'll single crochet into the next one. And then you'll slip stitch into the beginning one right there. 
and that will conclude this and your yarn is technically done for this particular color up until you get to the fringe. So you're gonna, just gonna cut just enough so that you can get this to weave through and so you'll turn it over to the back side and just use your skills and just begin to weave in through this. So don't uh, go across any of one of those stars. You wanna go stay, keep this within the structure. So weave in your ends and meet me back in just a moment and we're gonna start the outer rim next. So the small star is complete. You should be able to count those eight points and I have woven in my ends and they're all good to go. So I'm not gonna worry about stuff like this now because once I start stretching things you're gonna notice the picture will change and so then you can do any final trimming later. So clearly if you're doing the larger one these loops will be much longer and that'll work out. So the way that I did it here, this here's the 10 inch, it's going to stretch and I already uh, made sure the math works and so you'll notice that it will do a nice stretch. If this is loose in this particular point and you think it's gonna be really kind of sloppy, if you change the number of uh, chains in these loops here, you will can you can uh, give it more slack or you can make it tighter but it's completely up to you. If it's already loose though already on here, this uh, will stretch in time so you'll see that it will get a little more sloppy if that's something that bothers you. So let's begin and we're gonna start with the outer uh, loop here and we're gonna keep this nice and close. Now this is the right side facing up. If you can't remember that, so what I said in the pattern is that if that is something that you can't remember, just use a stitch marker and just apply just a piece of strand so you can see what side is facing up and just enough just so that you can find this later because once we start going on the outer rim you're gonna wanna be able to match that. As I mentioned in the beginning of this introduction, the outer ring support here is the same instruction no matter what size. Um, and the reason for it is that the mathematics to make this work will be awesome. Now you're going to notice a slight difference of the way that it looks. In the big version you're going to notice is that it's more spacious like this and in the smaller version because I'm having you keep the same counts it's gonna be more uh, narrow and dense. So that's something that you can um, decide for yourself. It has to be a multiple of eight in order to make it work if that helps you to know that. So when we go to crochet this we wanna stay on the inside of the rim. So when I go to do it I wanna crochet in like this going across. Um, I don't wanna go on the outside going over and the reason for it is that I want the right side to be facing up to match the star that we're gonna be applying at the exact same time. So let's grab our hook no matter what size you're working with and let's begin and I'm gonna be using burnt orange as my next color. So I'm going to have you begin with a standing single crochet and just keep a long enough tail so that you can uh, weave that in later. Okay, let's create a slip knot and put it onto our hand. Let's grab our hook and even if it's the large size hook it doesn't matter and I want you to put that on. I want you to come from behind the ring like this and put in the yarn in your hands and just let it come over top of the ring and pull it through like that. And you notice how I spun around to attach. Did you see that? I want to I want to show that to you again one more time. So I'm going to come in to the underside of the ring and then I'm pulling the yarn over top like this. And then I'm like that. And then I'm going to yarn over, just push them together and yarn over, pull through there. This is going to count as one of your stitches. This is a standing single crochet. It's a lot easier on your lap than it is here on a table. And what I'm going to do is that I'm, I have paper as my backdrop. I'm just gonna put down a project so I don't scratch my table. And what I want to do is that that's considered one of six. Okay, so it says join with a standing single crochet and then add five more single crochets there. So that will give you the number six. So let's just say this is one and you're going to just continue add the next one this is two, it's three, four, five, and six. So I'm just gonna verify that there's technically six and as I mentioned I want you to look at it from this perspective. So I got one, 
two, three, four, five, six. On the seventh one is where we wanna join this to the right side of the star. To do that, I need you, before you do anything, is to put the star loop, no matter if it's a chain five or chain eight, put it on top and ignore that it's there and I want you to single crochet like you normally have been. So go around the loop like you have been. Yarn over, pull through. And when you pull through, you still have to pull through these two to create the single crochet but pass through that to attach. Okay, so you're gonna just, and that just attached it to the ring. It's gonna look um, a little off in the very beginning but you just gotta trust me. So now we're going to single crochet the next six in a row. So just go around the ring and we're gonna do six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Now make sure that, see I can tell that the right side is not facing up because we, the way that I just did it. So I wanna make sure that that's up. Okay. And do you see how this one comes in forward and goes down through and then back up? Just look at that. So I wanna do the next one. So I wanna put the loop on and I wanna pretend it's not there and go around the hoop, pull through. And when I go to finish the single crochet, I'm gonna pass through everything, including that chain five. So each one of these should be in the same position. Okay, so let me just do another six and just, so we have one, two, three, four, five, and six, and on the seventh that you're going to join. So now that two are already in, it, the right side should still, it should face up automatically. So before you do anything, put the loop on. Okay, making sure I'm staying in order. And you're gonna notice that the more you add, the tighter that this will get. Then you're gonna go around the hoop and finish that seventh one with the ring in position. So please do that all the way around and I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm coming to the very last one and I'm coming around and I'm looking to make sure that each one of these looks similar because that means that I grabbed the loop properly. So I'm going to grab the very last one here and the last one is pr relatively pretty tight. So what I'm going to just do is just make room and sometimes I can't get the hook back there so I'm just gonna use my fingers and just kind of push the yarn onto the hook to be able to pull it around. And we'll try that again. <laughs> on, I want it to be this tight so just in case you're thinking that it's way too tight, I do want it tight and then pull through. Now that was the very last stitch. Before you join it, you wanna make sure that you're checking to make sure that this doesn't have a weird spin to it. So just kinda look at it. Everything else should be okay but you just wanna make sure that you're very final and you're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning single crochet and I'm not done. I wanna do one more round of this. Okay, so let's begin and I'm gonna show you what to do next. In the large star, I would recommend going around what I'm about to show you and then for the small star, I would not. I like the way that it looks here as a small star because if you do what I'm about to show you for the small star, you're gonna be covering up this stuff and in the large star, it really does work because the distance of these are a lot are a lot longer. So I would end it here if you're doing the small one, okay? So the small 10 inch. If you're ready for the large star and you wanna have that large rim that you see and you can leave it like this for the large if you wish as well is that you wanna skip the two that are holding this section and what this is going to do, it's going to create um, like a, 
a thickened border I guess. So right where we are you've joined it just single crochet and I want you to skip over the two stitches that are holding the star into position. And by doing that you're creating this rim to be wider but you're also reducing two stitches out per section which will then pull this to the interior. So in the small star you see that it's gonna be starting to cover over top of the fun stuff so why would you bother right? But in the large star it works. So I want to skip over the two that you see here and just jump on over and continue to do that. So you can do, you can, you know, you can make up your own mind what you prefer to do. So the large star has this version but for the small I would leave it out because I think it looks pretty cool the way it is and because it's much smaller as well. So you'll jump over the two and etc. Once you're done with that then you can just fasten off and just uh, attach to where you'd began and then that's gonna be the it and then you're gonna move on to the fringe. So I'm going to at this point keep this to the way that it should be and it's gonna be without that section. So you decide what is going to work for you and once you're ready to um, move along in this particular pattern then what we can do is then start applying our fringe. And so we have to make that fringe first. So let's uh, just weave in off our tails and when you're ready for the fringe we're going to continue in just a moment. So let's start working on our fringe. So I'm going to just continue and now the number of fringe that you need is the same for both of the patterns and because the stitch counts are the same. So because the larger rim or the larger ring had was wider it's still the number of stitches. So when you pull these apart you're going to notice that each stitch has two loops here and so when you apply the fringe you wanna go in between those in order to equally space those out. Let's begin and the cat still wants in the studio at this time. So I now have an afterthought now that the video is almost filmed. I'm going to change the number of strands for the small version to be eight and six. So eight of the first color and six of there. And when I look at it from this perspective here I feel like it's enough. And the reason for it is that if I keep adding this it's gonna push the start out of alignment and so I wanna make sure that that's where I'm gonna end. So that's um, just uh, something that I realized after I was kinda working through it. So let's continue on in the tutorial. So take your measuring tape and just pull it on out and get to the size that you need. In my case it would be 35 inches. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use that. It could be any color, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to just pull that along that piece until I get to the size that I want. So it's gonna be right there. So I'm going to use that strand as my measuring. You don't wanna waste so much so make sure that you get it pretty close because the yardage goes pretty quick on these things. So now using that as your base you can grab just any strand that's going to any one of the balls and then just match them and then pull it together like that and then you can safely cut and that's what I would do if I were you. So cut the number of strands that I'm suggesting and I'll be right back. So now what I want to do is that I wanna put one strand that I made with color A aside. This will be your hanging strap and we'll get that length later. So we'll use one of the straps for there. Therefore it's an odd number that's left over. If you feel that there's too many danglies for you then just uh, subtract some out and if you don't feel it's enough you can, if you have more uh, yarn left over on your balls you can do that. Take one strand, use color A and I want you to get the center point. If you want the star to be offset like this that's your center point going down. You can decide what works for you. I did it so the point was at the top and so therefore if you follow it across right here. So each one of these are made up of two strands each stitch and to apply this you're gonna come from behind with a smaller crochet hook and then a loop that yarn that was folded in half through. It's so important that you pull it to the back side because this loop is going to cross over and so just put this yarn through and pull through. So therefore the cross beam of the fringe that you see will be on the right side of the work and we can tell that by that. So it looks different on the back. So what I would do if I were you and you weren't watching me is that the next color is going to be the burnt orange folded in half. And I told you that each one of the stitches are made up of two. So you just find those next two and then stick your hook in the other piece right there. Loop it to pull it through to the back. 
and attach. So to keep it the sequence, the sequence, what I would recommend to you is that when you go to do this, get your next burnt orange and do the other side of the center point. So this is the center. And pull it through. And so then what am I gonna do next? I'm going to switch back to the taupe and then do the other, I do to, taupe this side, taupe this side and then switch and do the burnt orange and then the taupe and etc. and let those colors run out. Again if you feel it's too much going in there you can stop at any point. You are the creator at the end of the day. And so then I want you to just continue to add your fringe and I will be back in just a moment. So one thing that I decided to do is that I took the strands that once they were done is that the white ones, see how there's, there's three plies that are actually twisted together and then each one of the plies is made up of several other plies. So what you can do and what I did for myself is that I undid the plies just for the white. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just see, you got one, two and three. So I'm just gonna gently Un, uh, secure those and kind of pull them apart from each other and they're gonna unspin themselves slightly when you go to do that. Okay and so I'll do that with each one of the whites. And then at the base of each one of the whites I literally once I have it sized to the what I want what I can do is that I wanna uh, tie a knot here. You will notice that once you unspin something like this is that the unspinning will be longer than the other color because the spinning takes up more yarn. So that's something that you'll have to decide. What I did decide for the burnt color is that the burnt I just tied them like that. So I did not unspin those. So you can decide what you would like to do. If you'd like to do a little bit of macrame you can do that and that's something that you can decide for yourself in order to make that work. So we still have to apply the top strap and that's gonna be next. So keeping it in a line what I would do and what I did do is that I went roughly about the halfway point between the points here and I'm just going to literally just kind of be loose about it and I'm just gonna apply that extra strand that I had you pull aside and I want you to pull through. And just don't tie it tight because you may wanna decide what length that you want it but just uh, secure it into position temporarily until you decide what you would like to do. And then once you have a position where you wanna hang it then you could just quickly untie this and change the length of the strap. So I'm not tying it into a full knot because I don't know how it's gonna look yet. So once you have that knot tied then when in your you have the total of the that what you want. Sorry I'm kind of stumbling here. Then you're gonna wanna adjust this length and then tie these both into a knot and then just cut it nice and short and that will fray out on its own. You can then apply the swivel piece to the equal point here and then you can use that piece then to connect it to whatever you're doing so that it will allow it to spin. So this would be how you would do the gazebo win star. It's actually a really neat idea. You can remove any stitch markers that you have. In my case this is what I have and I'm gonna finish off the bottom trim and then just kinda take it outside. See where I wanna go for the height of how long I want it to droop down and if I wanna trim any of these to make it look really cool you can have angles. You can have just one dot, uh, sl uh, wedge slice. I don't know. You decide what you wanna do. Maybe one color you want shorter than the other. You are the artist at the end of the day. What I did for myself is that when you looked at it I kept it so that it was just above the railing of my gazebo so that it wasn't impacting that at all and so that I can just uh, sw uh, freely swing around with the wind. Have a good one and we hope to see you again soon.